All right, everyone, it is time to get funky as we learn some new amazing leg stretches in this table time massage sequence. Such good stuff for the hips and for the legs and for the lower back. And that is coming right up. Hi everyone, this is Shai. I am the founder of the Still Light Center School of Thai Yoga Massage. And today I do want to teach you some amazing, funky, fantastic and effective ways to add uh, hip, back and leg stretches into a table time massage sequence. So I actually just taught table time massage a few days ago. I'm incredibly jazzed for what this does for your practice. If you are either someone who typically and regularly gives time massage on a table or if you're a time massage practitioner who's been doing this on the floor, when you bring time massage on a table, uh, it is just heavenly. You know, that's the real word for it. And I get just such incredible feedback from the massage therapist that I teach this to how it revolutionizes their practice. So I just wanted to talk about it for a minute today. You know, especially what we're talking about here, leg stretches and ways to help the legs and the back and the hips and how they incorporate these components into pretty much every single massage they give. You know, actually the, the course that I just taught was this level two. So I was seeing students that I had not seen in some cases in six years or more and to hear the stories of what they are still doing with their table time massage, the parts of the sequence that they still use when they don't give a full massage but when they just incorporate it into other table work that they do, pretty much each person said that for the hips and for the back and for the legs, there is nothing like what they learned in their first level, the kind of stuff that I'm about to show you right now. So uh, it also involves kind of expanding your mind about what's allowed, especially if you went to massage school and things like getting on the table were considered no-nos. Now, of course, in a table time massage, you're keeping your clothes on, your partner's keeping their clothes on, I should say. So everybody is dressed in this massage. And therefore, what is allowed, I think, is quite different than when you are draping, you know. So we are going to be sitting on the table for a couple of these moves. And then we're going to get off the table and we're going to take a walk around. And just like any other part of the massage that I teach you, the overriding truth, the overriding thing that you need to keep in mind is all about easing into your work. So. I'm going to post links to the video up above that talks about the secrets to giving an amazing massage so you can watch that one in depth. But one of the key aspects to easing in is that more repetition is lighter or easier than a longer pause. And with these stretches, and especially the last couple of ones, the Nataraj and the Dragon Twist, easing in with more repetition. So that means you start from a much lighter place of whatever their their limit is, you know, the very, very uh, light boundary of where you find any kind of resistance. And then from there you pulse a lot. You have a lot of repetition before you would have any kind of longer pause. You test, you even check in and you ask. And so you just, you know, really intelligently from your heart ease into what you're doing with your partner as you explore edges. And as you do that, actually, what ends up happening is that you can take your clients quite deep into these if they can just breathe, they can relax into it, they can feel good, and you can test this out and, and find their limits. So watch that other video up above if you're unsure of what I'm talking about. It's really gonna help you. Watch this video at least once before you practice it, but then after that, you'll be great to go. So without further ado, let's head on over there. If you have any questions or comments or feedback, I would love to hear from you. If you're interested in learning table time massage, I am teaching it all over the place these days. I've taught it about four or five different times this year alone, and it's become really possibly my most popular course. If you would like to uh, host and give this in your area, then reach out to me as well, because I would love to teach it. I am just seeing dramatic, amazing things happen with clients and students and the feedback that they're getting from all of their clients. So I would love to share this with you. And let's start, first of all, with the teaching. Okay, let's move on. Got a little more time before lunch. And I want to teach you the rest of this flow. All right, so we've got four more things to learn. The first one is called the knee strut. Here's where we're going to start coming onto the table. So to make space, I want you to move their leg to the far side of the table. So if we had just finished this, just put the leg down so it's on 
the other knee is pointing up, and then you'll come up and sit on the table, and scoot your way in, and then sit like this, so that your one leg is just o over their straight leg, and then from here, you're going to raise the leg up and place your foot right behind the knee. One hand is going to hold the heel, one hand makes a peace sign <laughs> over the above the ankle. Okay, and the reason we do that is you never know. Lots of people have really loose ligaments in their ankles, so we don't want to overstretch. Your arms should be straight. You're not always going to have your legs straight, depending if you're pretty tall. But your arms can always be straight. So you just work with gravity to lean back, release, and repeat. And again, would you talk to them and find out how this feels? How okay. far to go? Yeah, but you'll see. You know, I don't want you to wrench or like pull too much. Just work with gravity and lean back, and pretty universally, this is enjoyed by all. Okay, and then you can put your foot down one spot and do it again. The next one is called the hurricane kick. So with this one, you have to be able to bring the leg down to the bottom of the table. So the way I like to do that. I'll hold the leg up, turn my foot to the other side, and make what we call a little foot sandwich. Okay, so your, your foot is locked in place, and that way I can take over their leg and guide it down. Now, if you're working with someone whose leg stays high up in the air, you might need to skip this, okay, when you're doing this on a table. If you're able to, though, I mean, because you'd want to have a pillow here. Now, if you have the chair there and you have a pillow and you can easily get it in there, that's okay. But otherwise, you know, if the knee is up a little bit, it's all good, okay? You might move your body out a little bit to be in a straight line. And then you're going to walk on the inner thigh here. So the way... I generally do this on a table is like this. I'm holding the leg out to the side next to mine, but the my arm is holding on to like making contact with my leg. Now some of you have learned it where you do it this way, and that works as well. It's certainly easier when we're talking about holding up the heavy mm -hmm. leg. Right? Okay? So so again, I brought the leg down, and if I want to do it in this other version, I'll just tuck her foot behind my knee, hold on to the heel and hold on to the straight leg. And the way I kick, there are three ways. So slow extension, start close to the knee, make your way closer to the middle of the body. Then you have a little snap kick. So if, again, it depends on if you can straighten your leg on the table. But you just before, essentially you go slowly and then just before it straightens out, go quickly. And the last one I like to call pedal to the middle. All right. So your leg is extended as much as you can and then from your, from your hip you hinge forward and lean into it. Now when you're doing both legs, it's the same idea. You can walk slowly. It's like when your cat's making biscuits. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and then you can do the same thing. So here, yeah, you can hold or pull just a little bit, but we're not forcing it. Okay, that's the hurricane kick. Next one is called Nataraj. So simply let your feet come off to the side. You're going to stand up. And you're going to take this leg for a walk. All right, so I like to straighten it out. Oh, my other foot. So I'm going to bring it back to the middle and then start to bring this leg across the body. Okay, Little thing to be aware of, when people have had hip replacements, we don't bring the leg across the body. But otherwise, even when someone's really tight or really stiff, bringing it across the body might look like this. I, I, I don't take myself across the body, this might be as far as I go. All right. But when the leg will go across the body, you're going to take it. It doesn't really matter. As far across the body as you can, you stop as soon as you feel some resistance. Now, Karen is a super flexy person. So her point of resistance is like out to here. But in many cases, it'll be, let's say, around here. Okay? Wherever you feel it, if you can, have a seat. 
Whenever I bend my arm, a rule that I always keep is keep it next to my body. So one hand is going to be bent and hold the heel next to your body, and then that's going to free up your other hand to massage along the outside of the leg. We'll start at fascial depth, and then what always happens is people's legs start to release. So I start to push with this hand. Now you see how my elbow left my body? That means shy, closer. All right, so that I keep it in close, and I can start to use my back leg to even push off a little bit. But I really like to sit if I can. It just makes it even more comfortable for me. So in Karen's case, we can see she's just going and going. So I can keep, at any point, I can stop, I can press, and I can stretch. Do you use your forms? I do, but I'm not going to use them right now. <laughs> We're just going to start with this version, okay? And then from here, the last one, this twist, I'm going to bend the knee so that the heel, her heel is just above her knee. Come around to the middle of the body and then start to take her in this twist. Bringing her knee as close to the table as it will go. Some repetition and then hold. Once I hold, I can press more here. So whenever I'm dealing with a twist, so the band that I want to work with is this whole outer band, outer chain of the body, from the outside of the foot, the outside of the leg, through the, through the back, and then along the arm of that body, of that side of the body. So I could start with the leg, then I can release that and just kind of hold it, then I'll reach over and then work the inside of the shoulder, and I can use my fingers or I can use my palm. Then bamboo rock, kind of going back and forth. And then finally, press both sides at the same time. And we said this last night, I'll remind you that even when I press both sides at the same time, usually I'll anchor one side first, then engage the other side. So in this case, I started with the shoulder. And in this case, I'll start with the leg. So take turns. Only in the most, most flexible cases do I tend to press both sides at the same time. Sweep it all out. Take the leg back for a walk. And we'll finish off where we started with a helicopter. All right, so I hope you liked it. I hope you're gonna practice this like I said before. With this sequence in particular, my suggestion is really watch this video at least once, if not more, before you try it on another person. There are some interesting and funky transitions and ways of getting together and, and supporting your partner that might be very new to you, so it'd be really good to watch that, but then practice it, talk it through with your partner, and then also if you have any questions or comments, anything is not clear, leave your questions right below here. Let me know what you think and check us out for more courses. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I'm wishing you incredible massages. See you soon.